say, um, I don't know where you get off, you know, t pretending to be an expert. I'm not an expert, but I have opinions and I'm allowed to voice them. People are very indignant that I have any kind of platform at all as a, as a young female conservative. Absolutely indignant. This one comes from Jerry Moyer. Actually, he signed this. Uh-huh. Jerry. Yep, and I published his name. <laughs> and to blame Obama on top of it is asinine, you moron, LOL. Uh-huh, yeah. Is that lots out, laugh out loud? Laugh out loud. And Hilarious. Not, not lots of love. No, not lots of love. Do you realize how stupid you looked on Hannity, LOL? Laugh out loud again. <laughs> You want to condemn incivility, listen to Mark Levin, sometime whose personal attacks on Nancy Stretch Pelosi and little Dick Durbin is only a sampling of his outrageous crudeness, and he's not even a comedian or an entertainer, but you do hear Pelosi whining. No, for a fairly good-looking babe, you're pathetically stupid. Best, Jerry. Right, so that actually falls into a number of categories. One is um, you should be directing this this tirade to apparently Mark Levin. I don't know why I am getting the, the, uh, the, the rant against Mark Levin's tirades. Another category is the, you know, you're good looking, but, um, which is pretty cheap and, and offensive, but I get those. And then the other category is you're stupid. You know, you don't know anything. But that's, I mean, this is just, this is uh, the tried and true stuff. Except if we look on your websites and around, we see these different pictures of you. Yeah. We see the one that looks somewhat like you do now with the glasses. Yes. Then we see and? another one where you have blonde hair. Right. And then we see, and I mean, they're, they look, they're fashion shots and all. I mean, you, you obviously must know your They're headshots. I mean, I, I'm a professional, and I had professional photos taken. I'm fully clothed and will always be. Um, there are promotional shots for my work. I mean, I'm on television. I'm selling books. Uh, so, I, you know, if you're implying that I'm kind of trying to market myself in a certain kind of way, I'm not. This is what I look like. <laughs> but let me ask the question this way. If you didn't do all that you do yeah. in your marketing, would people buy your writing uh, alone? Oh, gosh, I hope so. I mean... But you must notice that people react to all this that I'm, we're talking about here. Well, they do, but I also get a lot of comments on my writing. I don't know who this guy thinks he is. So I know that some of these people don't know who I am, don't know if I'm a, a man or a woman even, don't know what I look like. Um, so I, I, uh, I take comfort in knowing that I, I, I believe my work speaks for itself. I mean, I'm published in the Washington Post and Town Hall and and Slate and Human Events and American Spectator and the Daily News and I don't think that I'm getting column space because of the way I look, at least I hope not. Here's one from Clifford McKinstry, again, you, he identifies himself. Yeah. Obviously your brain is dead and like all <laughs> repubs, you take no responsibility for anything done wrong ever, just look at the Bush disaster and the rest of the nuts you people endorse. Yeah, I mean... What category do you put him in? Um, this is a guy who I, I get a lot of this just anti-Bush stuff. Um, because I'm a Republican, I must be a Bush supporter, and I must be anti-Obama just because I'm a Republican, and, and, and that's, that's, that's it. That's the meme. How far do you have to go to find people that think like you, that are your same age, that want to engage in thinking about the world and the issues? How hard is it? Um, it's not that hard. It's hard in Manhattan. Um, but it's not that hard, really, and especially because of Facebook and Twitter, we can find each other virtually. So I hear from people all over the country, you know, um, who are, I think, grateful that someone young is putting a new kind of spin on conservative uh, philosophy, um, talking about things in a different way, maybe. Uh, I think there are a lot of people out there my age that, that, are, that are women um, who want a new dialogue. And uh, I really haven't had to search very hard. They've well, found me. Let me ask you about the issue of money, because you brought that up earlier mm -hmm. about restrictive, I mean, uh, limited government. Mm -hmm. And George, during George Bush's time, we doubled our deficit by $5 trillion. Right. Early on in the Obama administration, we're already up to... 11, 12 trillion, we've already, you know, mm -hmm. we're on our way to maybe even doubling it again. Mm -hmm. 
What does somebody your age think about your future when it comes to whether it's Medicare, Medicaid, yeah. Social Security, taxes, 401ks, all that? Well, I think the, the baby boomer generation has been wildly irresponsible um, with, with our future, my future. Um, I think that once many of them sort of hung up their, their hippie their hippie shoes and traded them in for for their running shoes and their you know yuppie cappuccinos um, they they threw all kinds of caution out the window um, I think they got caught up in the excess and the me generation kind of politics and policies and I'm gonna have to pay for it my generation is gonna have to pay for it and the following generation How? is gonna have to pay How? for it well, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how the next three years go and, and how the next seven years go. I mean, it depends on how irreparable this damage becomes. But depending on which figure you use, it's between 65 and $70 yeah. trillion dollar liability. Right. We're, and everybody that studies this says you, we can't grow out of this. So what do we do? I mean, are we, is your life going to be less expansive? You have fewer things um, or does it matter to you well uh, I don't know that it matters to me personally I mean I can take a vested interest in the future of the you know the country but um I think that we're gonna have to make some tough decisions and by we I mean my generation my generation is gonna have to cut back where this generation is not we're gonna have to learn from the past mistakes and say all right thanks mom and dad not personally my mom and dad but thanks mom and dad and thanks grand grandpa and grandma but uh we're gonna we're gonna do things differently now we have to have the courage to do that though i think it's really hard to stop once you've gotten into that cycle of spend 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 what kind of a grade would you give the republican congress i mean and one of the things in your book mm -hmm. one of your heroes is newt gingrich yeah i like i mean i don't know that he's a hero i mean we interviewed him along with 30 other um, interesting conservatives on all sides of the spectrum. Uh, I think Newt Gingrich is a really galvanizing figure. He's very smart, incredibly smart. Um, I think... Uh, Would you support him for president? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm reluctant to say who the future of the party is, because anytime you do that, that person automatically gets sort of a bullseye on their back. And I think it's too early. Uh, I'd rather be a, a coalition right now, have no leader, and figure out what our message is before we figure out what the messenger you, is. Who would look be your like. favorite symbol of the party today? I mean, give me somebody that's out there. God, I like Sarah Palin. I like Mitt Romney. Um, I like Mike Huckabee. I mean, th these are all, I think, really interesting people and all potentially great leaders. But I don't know what the country is going to look like in three years. But you, you have focused on fiscal conservatism yeah. and would you say that the Republican led Congress back 95 on was a conservative fiscally no. conservative no well, I, why would you then think in the future they're going to be well I think that because of the recent financial crisis there's more of an eye on it whether it's Michael Moore shining a light on on capitalism and corporate greed or it's coming from the right um, sort of the Wall Street Journal ethic shining a light on on fiscal irresponsibility everyone's eyes are on this now but is there any evidence at this time that anything is going to change I, I don't know I, it's certainly not with uh, in the White House I don't I don't think but but I don't know I mean the the interesting thing about this administration is I think they expected Republican pushback they didn't expect pushback from the citizenry whether it was at the town halls or the tea parties, on spending or on health care, I think that really has taken them by surprise. So if the, the citizenry um, keeps uh, railing against this profligate spending, then I think we really do have a chance at, at turning things around. Because the, the loudest voices are coming not from talk radio or the internet or television or Congress. The loudest voices are actually coming from from middle America. On your website, you have this quote from Thaddeus McCotter, Michigan yeah. congressman, but in his fourth term. I really dig SE because when going into political battle, best to bring a cup. Yeah, he's great. I mean, 
I don't know what that means. Do you know him? I do. I, I do know, know him. When I read it, I wondered, what does he mean? Is that his cup for money or cup, I don't for, know. cup for contributions? But that's bad. I mean, he's so wonderfully kooky. Um, also brilliant. And I think he's a real, he's a real uh, beacon for young conservatives. He has a lot of interesting ideas. He's doing things in a different way. I mean, he does red eye. You know, on, on Fox News, he's he's got a different approach, and I how, think a lot of people are listening to how him. How much now. of a following? The red Eye is rather, well, how would you describe it? It's, it's satirical. It's uh, Yeah, it's irreverent. It's irreverent. It's an irreverent, right-leaning look at the news. So there's humor. It's on late night, so there's a little bit more leeway with what they can say. And it's it's hilarious, frankly. It's, it's satire and parody and actually... Um, just had a huge bump in the ratings over the past few months. 